This is a conga, and conga is uh, the main instrument for rumba, and one of the main instruments, percussion instruments for Afro-Cuba and music in general, and later, what we call salsa. And right now, we need to split a little bit the field between what we call Afro-Cuban music and what we call salsa. Because salsa, as we know it, of course, means sauce. And some musicians didn't like that their music was called sauce, salsa, like Tito Puente, for example. Because salsa actually was born and the name was invented as a label in the early 70s in New York. And then there is a difference between Afro-Cuban traditional music, instrumental and orchestral Afro-Cuban music from Cuba, and what happened later in New York when uh, Latino musicians, Cubans, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, and other Latin Americans got together with jazz musicians in, uh, in the city of New York and uh, around the Fania, Fania Records label, uh, that movement called Salsa started. Mm -hmm. uh, then, right now, I need to tell you, one thing is Afro-Cuban music, other thing is Salsa. Salsa is a brand, is a label, is an umbrella. Mm -hmm. When we go to dance Salsa, we are not dancing Salsa, we are dancing different dances. We are dancing Mambo, or we are dancing Son, or we are dancing so many other dances under the umbrella or label salsa. Traditional Afro-Cuban music started, as we can guess now, with something very similar to the traditional rumba. Uh, when you listen to the music and watch the videos of traditional rumba, well, probably that's the great-grandmother of salsa. Mm? There is no salsa, there is no Afro-Cuban music without that, that type of music that is only congas and some shakeres and voice. Voice many times with chants uh, sung in the Yoruba language or other African languages still kept today in Cuba. Then a different process starts in which other elements, other influences from Europe, from the US, were incorporated into the Afro-Cuban music together with the folk music from Spain that also was brought to the island, of course. And with all that mix, Afro-Cuban music evolves for 300 years. Before that is exported into the States and before in the early 70s, the salsa movement starts in New York. While we were in Africa, I told you some of the instruments survived the crossing of the Atlantic, some other didn't. And many, many of the instruments, most of the instruments didn't do the transition. And what happened is, for example, uh, the djembe didn't make it into the Americas, uh, the goma drums didn't make it into the Americas, but the main role in the Afro Latin American music was taken by the conga or some other similar instruments. If you look at the conga, still today in a very fancy conga like this one, uh, looks a little like a barrel. And why it looks a little like a barrel? Well, because these instruments develop from barrels, whether in uh, Cuba or in uh, Puerto Rico, we're still today, bomba music, is played with instruments called barriles, barrels, or the atabakis in Brazil, or the tambores in, in Uruguay with the candombe. What happened is the Africans were not allowed to take time to go to the uh, rainforest or the woods and cut their own tree and carve the tree and go through the whole process of uh, building a new drum. But they learned that there were barrels, spare barrels everywhere in, in wooden boxes. And with that, they started building their new drums. That's why congas and barriles and atabakis and so many other tambores, so many other drums from Latin America are shaped 
like uh, a barrel. Even the tambora from the Dominican merengue or the Colombian tambora, those are all barrel-shaped instruments. Uh, I think that's an interesting aspect of even with the low technology of the 16th century, 17th century, 18th century, already uh, the, the vanquished were adapting uh, surplus, mm? even the garbage of, of the technologi technology of their time to produce and adapt that to their own sounds. And then when you see a nice conga like this one, well, uh, always remember that this started with a slave that took a barrel and put some skin on top to be able to play the rhythms and the groups that he had in his mind. The only wealth, really, that he can bring with him from Africa. You already saw the conga, and everybody knows the conga. Probably everybody knows the, the bongo. These are the drums that everybody has in the attic because somebody in the family thought that they were cool and easy to play. Actually, bongos are some of the hardest drums to play. Uh, if you don't know how to play them, they can even hurt your hands. That's why so many bongos are still in attics or basements. But the, the bongo uh, is the companion of the conga. There are two of them. Uh, you saw also that congas could be played uh, as one conga or two or three or four or five. And some players play with a lot of congas. But the basic uh, tumbao, the, versus, the basic rhythm the conga plays, uh, is played just by with one conga. The bongo plays a different pattern called martillo. Martillo means hammer. Hmm? And, and when you interlock the pattern of the conga with the pattern of the bongo, you already have the basics for uh, rumba, for the rumba rhythm. Mm? And then bongo, normally you need to grab the bongo like this, which is not easy. Mm? And then it's a very mm? it's a bright type of drum. Mm? The conga and the bongo, part of the essentials of uh, Afro-Cuban and salsa music. This is the moment to bring, uh, again, the bata drums. Mm? I show you the African bata drum, and I show you the more modern Cuban style of bata drum. In Cuba, they still use also some of the traditional with rope or leather, mm? uh, leather straps, mm? and, and the new type of bata drum, because this is exactly the type of music that plays the traditional santeria in Afro-Cuban ritual music that you are going to be seeing and listening in the videos. These are the famous timbales. This is the instrument that Tito Puente, probably the most famous of all timbal players of history, played. It was a later uh, incorporation into Afro-Cuban and salsa music, and it's Clearly, the loudest of the instruments in the percussion in the percussion section, but the percussion section is going to have uh, bongos, is going to have congas, and is going to have some other musician playing uh, the timbales, and normally the timbalero is going to have also a cowbell here. And then I can show two functions of this setting of the the timbales and the cowbell, in this case. The, the timbal is very loud, we said that. And then what happened is, if they are playing all the time, like here, they can overpower the whole orchestra. That is an instrument that flashes sometimes with a type of rolls, but also uh, for long periods in a tune, they play something called cascara. Cascara means shell. In this case, they're playing in the shell of the drum. And then you're going to see and, and listen to the timbalero many times playing on the sides of the drum or playing on the cowbell. And what happened with the cowbell? The cowbell has a very important function. We talk about the timeline in West African music. The pattern that we use, the clave, is a timeline. 
and the most uh, usual, the old style clave is called son clave. Hmm? That's developed in the class. For now, just take my word, it's called son clave. There is another style called rumba clave. Hmm? But uh, in the cowbell, for example, it's very typical that you are going to listen to the uh, uh, son clave. That's one thing that's going to happen with the, with the cowbell. Other thing that can happen is that you are playing a cha-cha-cha or you are listening to a cha-cha-cha. And in a cha-cha-cha, there is no clave. The timbalero is going to be doing cha-cha-cha, cha-cha-cha. Or just one, two, one, two, one, two. Uh, in mambo, in, in, in rumba, in song, there are different uh, ways of using the uh, cowbell, mm? but it's a very important instrument because it's going to be playing that famous timeline that in Afro-Cuban music, but also, for example, in, in Uruguay, in the candombe music, we call clave. Mm? And then we have the, the loud moment of the timbal when they do the, all the rolls. <laughs> that, and that's the exciting moment for the timbalero. <laughs> 